Good day, Olivarians. Welcome to another video lecture for I3, Inquiries, Investigations, and Immersion. Last time, you were able to determine the research problem that you wanted to answer on your present study. Also, you have already written the draft of your study's introduction. Now, we will explore the second section of your IMRED paper, the methods, understanding ways to collect data. Methods is the second section of your study. But what do we mean when we say methods? Let's check its meaning with the Merriam-Webster online dictionary. It says there, the word method means a systematic procedure or technique, a systematic plan, and a process of doing something. All of this will tell us that methods has something to do with a procedure that must be done systematically to successfully do something. If we are going to put it in the context of research, methods is not just about gathering the data, but it also requires clear and detailed procedure on how you have to gather the needed data for your study. Thus, methods is the section of your paper that will allow you to plan the process that you will take to get the answer to your research problem. Now, methods have five subsections which are design, sample and sampling, instrumentation and scale, data gathering, and statistical analysis. These terms are quite different with the terms used for the traditional paper, but it pertains to the same things. Let's discuss these subsections starting with the design. The design or research design is important to ensure that the gathered information will really help you answer the research problem in a clear and efficient way. There are many designs that you can choose from. It can be qualitative or quantitative. It can be descriptive, associational, or intervention. So, which design should you use? Choosing a design for your research depends on your goal or purpose. With our current situation, we only require you to have a descriptive research. Why descriptive research? Here's why. In a descriptive research, we will only collect knowledge about the phenomenon's current state and to explain what exists in relation to factors in a situation. Hence, a descriptive research, we are not doing the following. We are not determining the relationship of two variables. This is only done in correlational studies. We are also not going to observe changes based on intervention. This is only done in experimental research. And lastly, we are not discovering a definitive answer or disprove a hypothesis. Instead, this is what we are going to do in a descriptive research. First, we are going to observe the variable or subject in a completely natural or unchanged environment. Second, we are going to use instrumentation for measurement and observation. And lastly, we are going to use data to give important recommendations and develop a more focused study. This research design is recommended for our current situation since development of instrument and data collection using survey will not require physical interaction with the help of current applications like Google Forms. Your safety is still our utmost concern even when we conduct our research during this time of pandemic. Now, let's move to the second subsection, which is the sample and sampling. Before we define what is a sample, let's first define where this sample should come from, which is the population. 
population is an infinite collection of individuals or objects with specified class or characteristics under consideration. Since it's infinite, observing the entire population can be difficult due to physical limitations like time, money, and other resources. If that's the case, what will you do then? Then, we will get a sample from the population. Sample means a finite or limited collection of individuals or objects from the population. In other words, this limited number of people must be enough to represent its population. Now, you might be asking, how will we get a representative and acceptable sample size? You don't need to worry because there's a formula that you can use and that is the Slovens formula which is composed of number of samples represented by a small letter N, total population represented by a capital letter N, and margin of error represented by a small letter E. Thus, the formula for the number of sample is number of sample is equal to the total population divided by the sum of 1 and the product of total population and the square of margin of error. Once you're done with determining the sample size, you can now employ sampling techniques to choose your respondents. There are two main types of sampling techniques, and these are probability and non-probability sampling. Their main difference is, with probability, all members of the population have an equal chance to be selected in the sample. On the other hand, with non-probability, not all members of the population are given equal chance to be included in the sample. There are also four common types of probability and non-probability sampling. For probability sampling, these are simple random, stratified random, systematic random, and cluster. For non-probability, we have convenience, purposive, cota, and snowball. These will be discussed in detail in another recorded video lecture. Let's have instrumentation and scale for the third subsection. Instrumentation is the process by which you develop your research instrument. Now, what is a research instrument? If musical instruments are used to make music, research instruments are tools used to measure your variable. In other words, this is the instrument that you will use to measure your variable and collect the data that you needed for your study. For a descriptive research, we can use a questionnaire and or a test as the research instrument. To get an accurate data, research instruments must have these two qualities. It must have validity and reliability. Validity refers to how well a method calculates what it is supposed to measure as an instrument and reliability refers to the consistency of measurements, results, and the extent to which they are accurate, error-free, and stable. Thus, research instruments must be both valid and reliable. There are three types of validity, and experts on your field of study should be the one to validate your research using either of these three types. Content validity. It refers to the extent of how the research instrument measures the important and essential dimensions of the variable. A table of specifications or TOS that identifies the domain of tasks measured by the instrument is also a useful tool. Second, construct validity. It assesses whether an instrument really represents the variable that you are measuring by observing other indicators or variables that are related with it. And lastly, phase validity. It is seen to be the most basic type of validity since it is not based on any empirical approach. It is correlated with the highest degree of subjectivity. 
it is used to quickly eliminate poor quality research in the initial stage of the study. There are also three types of reliability. A statistical analysis can be used to determine if an instrument is reliable. Here are the three types of reliability. The first one is stability. A research instrument can demonstrate evidence of stability if the same result is obtained upon re-administration of the instrument to the same sample. This is also called the test-retest method. This is typically done by graphing the data in a scatter plot and computing Pearson's R. The next one is homogeneity. This type of evidence is also called internal consistency. A research instrument has internal consistency if the different items in the test are measuring the same construct. The most common measure of internal consistency used by researchers is a statistic called Cronbach's Alpha. The last one is scorer reliability. It refers to the degree of agreement of raters if the same instrument was used. It is also called as the inter-rater reliability. This is often assessed using Cronbach's Alpha when the judgments are quantitative or an analogous statistic called Cohen's Kaffa when they are categorical. Now, here are the basic types of questionnaires that you can use on your own research. The first one is multiple choice questions, a type of survey questionnaire that allows you to give predetermined choices to your respondents. Second, we have rating scales. In rating scale questions, sometimes referred to as ordinal questions, the question displays a scale of answer options from any range like 0 to 100, 1 to 10, or others. The third one is Likert scale. These survey questionnaire measure the respondent's opinion or feelings towards a specific topic. The fourth one is demographic questions. These are questions that pertain to the respondent's basic information such as their gender, age, social status, occupation, income level, and such. The last one is ranking questions. A ranking question asks respondents to rank the given choices based on their preference. The type of survey questions that you will use in your study still depends on the data that you needed for your research. Now, you're ready to construct your questionnaire. In order to do that, you must follow these steps. First, you must review all related literatures to see if an already prepared questionnaire is available similar to your topic. It will save time and effort required to construct an entirely new questionnaire. Changes can be made as the study demands. Just properly cite the source where you got the prepared questionnaire. Next, decide what information should be sought. List specific objectives to be achieved by the questionnaire based on your finalized research questions. Then, determine the appropriate respondents that will give the data needed to answer your research problem. After that, you can now construct your questionnaire. Each item must be developed to measure a specific aspect of objectives or hypothesis. Once done, Re-examine and revise the questions. Questionnaire should be scrutinized for any technical defects. Then, you can pre-test your questionnaires. It helps in identifying and solving the unforeseen problems in administration of questionnaires such as phrasing, sequence, length of the question, and other things. And lastly, Final editing is done to ensure that every element passes inspections, the content, form, question sequence, spacing arrangement, and appearance must all be checked for accuracy. It is also important that your questions have the following characteristics. First, it must have clear objective. It means that the questions are clearly related 
to the research question. Next, it must have simple language. Questions do not have excess words and jargons are avoided. It must also have clear concepts. Question is easy to understand and answer. It must be without bias. Question is not biased and when opinion is asked, an alternative response like no opinion or I don't want to answer is provided. It must have adequate answer options. The predefined responses are appropriate and adequate to answer the question. It must have shorter questions. Question must be short and simple as possible. It must have single question at a time. Question addresses only one issue or concept. It must have affirmative sentences. Question is not negatively framed. Mathematics should not be imposed. Question does not require one to compute as much as possible. It must have short and clear reference periods. Question reference must be clearly stated and the reference question must be just after or before it. If possible, just avoid question reference. Data collected through your questionnaires can be classified based on the scales of measurements. There are four classifications. Nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale, ratio scale. These will be further explained to you in another recorded video lecture. Now we're down to the last two subsections. Data gathering will show the process that you have followed in collecting the data. After the data is collected, the statistical analysis will be employed to remove the biases by interpreting the data statistically. These last two subsections will also be further explained in another recorded video lecture. To sum up, again, methods will be your systematic plan to get the data needed to answer your research problem. This is composed of five subsections which are design, sample and sampling, instrumentation and scale, data gathering, and statistical analysis. Thank you for watching this video lecture. If you have any questions or clarifications, you may ask it to your respective research teachers. Happy learning at home with lessons made easy by Olivarian Go Teach. One proud Olivarian.